It has been the dream of many people for the eventual colonization and settlement of space, going as far as devising detailed plans for such endeavors. While beyond the capabilities of today's space programs and private space ventures, it is anticipated that space technology will evolve and advance to enable those dreams to someday become reality. Many of those plans entail the exploration and colonization of Earth's moon, Mars, and the other bodies in the solar system, and those scenarios are a well-known trope in science fiction. Beyond merely settling and living on moons and other planets, some people even envision whole cities and industrial operations being developed as colonization expands further. However, there are those who advocate living in space rather than on the surface of a moon or planet, building upon the concept of space stations. Inspired by the promise of a future in space, during the mid-1970s there were serious studies conducted on the possibility of space station projects far larger and far more ambitious than past, present, and future space station projects. The studies resulted in the designs for massive space habitats that would be cities in space and would serve as space colonies inhabited by thousands of people. As discussed in the two previous videos, during the summer of 1975, NASA and Stanford University held a 10-week conference later known as the Summer Study. See part one for more about the conference. During this conference, plans for space colonization were discussed in detail leading to studies of habitat designs. A total of three designs resulted from the study. The Bernal Sphere, discussed in Part 1, and the Stanford Taurus, discussed in Part 2. The third and most ambitious and largest of those designs proposed was Gerard O'Neill's Island 3 design, better known as the O'Neill Cylinder. Islands 1 and 2 were the Bernal Spheres discussed in Part 1. The cylinder colonies would be massive structures dwarfing the other designs and envisioned to be 5 miles in diameter and 20 miles long. Like the Bernal Sphere and Stanford Taurus, this would as well be constructed from materials mined on the moon by a lunar base and sent to the colony by a mass driver. See Part 1 for more about the lunar mass driver. As capabilities advanced further, colonies would be built from materials mined from asteroids. Also like the other two, it would be located at the Earth-Moon L5 Lagrange point like the other colony designs. Also see part one for more about Lagrange points. In each cylinder there would be six equal sized sections running the length of the structure. Three would be windows, the other three being inhabited land sections. The cylinders would be in pairs and connected by cables and would rotate in opposite directions to remain aimed at the sun. The rotation rate would be 28 times per hour to create artificial Earth-like gravity. The central access would be a zero-G region where facilities for zero-G recreational activities could be carried out while people would live along the inside surface of the cylinder. Large mirrors hinged at one end of a window section would be angled to reflect sunlight into the cylinders. Day and night would be simulated by adjusting the position of the mirrors, opening the view from the windows to space. Movement of the mirrors would also give the illusion of the sun moving and creating natural sun angles during the simulated day. A 20 mile diameter outer agricultural ring rotating at a different speed would be where the colony's farming would be carried out. The colony's industrial sections would be at the center of each cylinder, facilitating manufacturing processes that would benefit from being conducted in zero-g. O'Neill believed that living aboard such a colony would be better than living in some places on Earth due to the abundance of food, better climate, and weather control, as well as the absence of pollution. Activities among the inhabitants of the colony would include sports and other act outdoor activities due to the very large interior space of the colony. The scale of the colony would be truly massive 
with interior space large enough to have hills, lakes, and even space large enough for terrestrial structures such as suspension bridges, as well as buildings. Even clouds would be able to form inside the colony. The land area inside would be 500 square miles, with space for several million people, or equivalent to the population of some of the largest cities on Earth. This would mean that multiple colonies such as this could have tens of millions of people living in space, alleviating overpopulation on Earth along with moving industry into space to mitigate the environmental effects of pollution. As with the other colony design proposals, while some of those involved with the study assumed the colony would be built and inhabited by the early years of the 21st century, as previously stated, it has turned out to be extremely ambitious and beyond the capabilities of current space programs or private space ventures, even more so for something on the scale of an O'Neill cylinder. However, this, like the other two colony designs, is one thing that might have been, it still has promise for further in the future, once spaceflight capabilities and technology have advanced enough to allow such a massive project to be carried out, perhaps after examples of the smaller colonies are built and inhabited, and in this case, science fiction would become reality and humanity would truly become a space-faring civilization. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and check out the other videos on this channel. And always remember, when the future was cool,